Hello there everyone and welcome back to Tia No Brave New World, episode 5, in which we're playing as the Russian Federation. We've talked about the chain of command. After years use a bloody toy, we've retaken the fertile lands of Rus. There's no path forward save that which runs through Moscow. Through years of constant warfare, our general staff has not been lax. They've learned and grown together, each contributing his unique experience to create a structure and culture that is unique to us. We possess advantages that we never had as mere warring states. We've had the trust and support of our generals, and if we're in, if we're lucky, the support of the soldiers as well. The coming struggle will not be won by luck. We must ruthlessly exploit these unique skills if we are to be victorious in the struggle against the German imperialism. We must identify and understand that these unique talents or our greatest minds will they follow. And our armies, our armies are the weaker forward. Soldiers present arms. Add chain of command. A new dawn. And Vasily Zhukshin sat at his desk. Novos Abyss was much colder than Bonal. It was larger, louder, and busy, much busier too. It seemed to correspond with his current position as a president of the Federation. He had the Soloviks in his left ear and the corporations in the right, all day 24-7. Vasily didn't like the job, as a matter of fact, he despised it. At times, he wished he was back in bar and all challenging Pokrishkin and backing minor reforms to Shukshin. This was much, that was much easier to deal with than his current mis mission and situation. Despite his recent efforts, there was so much to do, heck. There was an entire system that needed to be overhauled, and reform to the Federation was to ever become a truly free and democratic nation. The Silovics were putting up a stiff resistance at every turn, doing everything possible to halt the reforms and to overrule the soon-to-be-founded Federal Assembly. For decades, since breaking away from the failed Central Siberian Republic, the Silovics and the Pokrishkin had been in power. They made a federation what it was, a land where the strong made a complete rule of the people, pocketing the cash and ignoring the damage they had done. This federation would be different, though. It wouldn't be like the misplaced idealism of the failed CSR, it wouldn't be like Pokrishkin's cynical federation. It would be a different kind of federation, to a bright and hopeful future. And we've got some comments to go through as well, as we're currently doing a laying the groundwork, which I think you read last time too. So, address the nation, uh, political power, decrease the strength of, of, the, of the corporations, which I think I already got rid of, so. Address the nation. Since the reunification of Russia under the banner of the Federation, much of the nation and by extension of the world is unsure of President Chukchin's intentions in office beyond vague promises of reform. Environmentalism and anti-corporatism made during his election campaign. It's time for the President to take a stand in the Nobles of Beers before the nation and of the world and reveal to all precisely what the goals of a reunited Russian state will be moving forward. And then we'll talk about pragmatism and democracy. As we're down here too, um, against Ru <clears throat> not Russia. We are Russia. Iran. Good old Iran. Are they moving in? Yeah, they sort of are. Um, we're going to do the best we can to make sure these guys do okay. Uh, and are they there? Yes, they almost are. Happy February, though. <clears throat> Someone says in the comments from, like, yesterday, Can you do TNO USA as progressive MCS? Eventually, yeah, I can. Um, so, yeah. Someone says, I was wondering, since the last time you claimed all the lands that you lost, you did the option to deport all Germans, even the ones that had been there since before the war. So it says, I wonder what happens if you don't take that option. So basically, when we take all of this stuff, what happens when we don't deport the Germans? Because uh, we probably honestly will in the end. Nice. Also, I, I'm not going to use... Well, I, I did use a few cops commands to give these guys a little bit more of a shot. The Shah of Iran here. So, we go there and, and circle and destroy those divisions. That'd be nice. <clears throat> Laying the groundwork. <clears throat> Ah, Vasily sat at the head of a table in front of him, sat his presidential cabinet, his foreign minister, Vladimir Sobolev, his economic minister, Mikhail Karchenko, and the security minister and old friend, Ahmed Khan Sultan, and the vice president and opposition leader, Alexander Pokrushkin. Uh, Vasily cleared his throat before reaching a set of papers on his desk. Gentlemen, I'd like to, it's good to see you all today. I know you are all of busy schedule, so I'll keep this brief. The Federation, as you know, doesn't just encompass Central Siberia anymore, but all of free Russia. In line with this new reality, I think it's time we reform the government into something more pragmatic to accommodate the Federation's needs, the President explained. I received three nods in agreement, but of course, his Vice President was quick to object. Mr. President, you can't be serious. It's just another attempt by you to subvert the Siloviki, and you darn well know it. I met went to raise his protest, but Vasily rose his hand, stopping the ace from doing so. I understand your reservations on this, Alexander, but even you must admit, the current system is overextended and in dire need of change. Alexander opened his mouth to speak, but stopped and leaned back in his chair. The Siloviki won't like this, Vasily, the Vodka reminded his own friend. I don't expect them to, Alexander, but it has to be dumb for the good of the Federation, right? Vasily said. Alexander sighed, shaking his head before looking back at the President. And all right, old friend, for the good of the Federation. Introduce the concept. After much arguing and planning among members of the RAPP and the President himself over how the party plans to achieve their goal of pragmatic democracy, <coughs> the President and senior officials of RAP have this presented a concept to the State Duma which aims to answer how they plan to achieve these ambitious goals, the Federal Assembly. An old concept made years ago during the early days of the Central Siberian Republic has been reintroduced to the halls of the government, revamped to better suit the needs of the Russian Federation and the goals of democratizing the nation. Oh, we're losing political power slowly, because we're integrating in so many places, so. Um, in the meantime... Global conflicts, millennia, or in stage three already. So, plan approval, construct research facilities where our theories may be tested. Heck yeah! Oh no! 
Very nice. Um, if you take this, is that just gonna destroy them all? Okay, nice. And we're there. What? Not gonna lie, I might have a. I, I wanted a shot of win, so I'll just tell you what, what's gonna happen here. Um, should be okay. So if you were to ride up north, you could do the, the, the Briz. Ah. Do we not do a destination? Oh. Present speech. <coughs> the President Shukshin stood before. Oh. Uh, the vast crowd of supporters who had gathered from as far as our Congos to hear the champ freedom's champion speak. Shukshin smiled as he approached the microphone, the eyes that rolled now upon him. Rushes once of the president. Immediately the crowd erupted and just cheered the celebration. It was almost hard to believe it. A people once so submissive and broken in the age of warlordism, now proud and hopeful of the days ahead. Soon the crowd fell back into silence as the president spoke again. But not all Russians erupt with us today. Millions of people are beyond our borders and still live on occupation. The rights of human beings stripped from them reduced to second class citizens in their own land. To those people unfortunate enough to live under such conditions, hear me when I say this. Shukshin paused for a moment, a smile emerging on his face as he gazed upon the crowds of thousands before him, watching him in silence as the rest of the world. Your liberation is coming. The crowd cheered wildly as Shukshin looked toward the skies, basking in the sunlight and the cool air. He felt it. The winds had changed in the afternoon breeze. Things were different now, and the world knew it. For the liberation of all Russians. As we're still trying to uh, do stuff here, too. I'm glad we don't have to get involved in too many places, but look at all the stuff we have to core. Oh my god. Um, Orenburg. Be pretty good to do, yeah. Starting to growth a little bit. 5%, not bad, not bad. Growth is continually going up. We have quite a large deficit. Um, I'm just waiting until we can take out, like, these guys. Like, because <clears throat> I'm not cutting down the army really at all yet, so... We'll see. Inspection day. So, right there, soldier, you're doing it all wrong. General Kozen st uh, stalked across the muddy courtyard, leaving a besuited group of military inspectors in his dust. Across the barracks, in another field entirely, a group of exhausted greenhorns were moments away from blowing their heads off. The general's two aides did a double take, then followed him after. Give me that darn rifle, Kozen said. He grabbed the old AK-47 out of the private's hands and swept forward down the young soldier's acne-scarred face. Look. You're about two seconds away from killing yourself. The bald general pulled back the rifle's bolt and ejected an unfired round from the chamber. He laughed. Ever fancy French kissing a bullet? Me neither. Don't screw up in my army again. <clears throat> Kozen stood and stepped behind him. Inside the barracks, his recruits called home. There were uh, eight bunk beds, each clothed in scratchy gray-blue sh sheets. The lights that swung above the linoleum floor flickered and they were un universally covered in dead flies. Across the floor, <clears throat> the flag of the Federation hung crooked and creased, and, dusty, seven young men stood at a sloppy attention, some ju soon joined by the private whose life the general saved, two had haircuts outside of regulations, five had unshined shoes, three had allowed grease stains under their pants. Jesus, what a bunch of pigs, General Cousin said. You wouldn't have lasted five minutes in the Red Army. Can I get anything for you? Smoothies? Manicures? Maybe a nicer pillow so you can take a nap? No, sir, the private shouted back. Screw me, I had a court martial your sergeant. If the president was here, I'd tear his hair out. Cousin felt the battered wood of the rifle underneath his fingertips. How should you have an idea? Let's see if you've been paying attention to your instructors. <clears throat> if any of you can safely clean and reassemble your rifles before me, I'll give you two days' leave and that's, say, 500 out of my pocket. The privates around the room lit up, but I've beat all of you. I'm going to work your butts off until you can't remember what sleeping looks like. One of the privates says his hand, but sir, cousin cut him off without a shot. Start. Get ready for the butt kicking of a lifetime. <coughs> So I did ask you guys yesterday whether we should work with the Slovaki or should we work a deal with the new parties? And the time is recording, there is more support for a deal with the new parties. Overwhelming support. Since the annexation of the Western Russia and the Federation, new political organizations and parties have quickly gained influence in our government, some even making their way into the state Duma. The strongest of parties of this bunch are the pacifist RSLP and the Democratic Socialist the DSPR. I ran to create a new and inclusive multi-party government, which shows the needs of pragmatic democracy. It would be wise to reach out to these parties and work with them in order to form a coalition government of pluralistic democracy. Even it means conceding some of our own political influence in the Federation's reform political system, of course. <clears throat> but we were quite popular with the vote, so. Not super concerned, I just want to cut down this debt. It's mostly from the military spending, too. So, uh, yeah, I did my mod use consequence here. Because I want to see what happens. I would like to have uh, Iran with us. So, Besides, they go here, the Socialist Federation. They'll probably go with who? Maybe they'll go by themselves. Maybe they'll go, maybe they'll go. by themselves. I don't know. <coughs> so, it is what it is. Uh, Poverty's not too bad, though. Research wise, what are we doing? Come up here. So, you guys. You're just going to be garrisons. Go ahead and convert them over. It won't be good for the warfare, but that's fine. The other two uh, armies, I'm just going to leave them as is. So basically, this is what we're going to do now. You guys come up here. You guys stretch yourselves to the limits. And you guys stretch yourselves to the limits, too. 
Even though I technically did help them out earlier, but the cards begin to stir or fall. Begin to fall. It had been a mere weeks since the smooth was was uh, brought to an end by the Federation under his command, yet <clears throat> Shukshin was already stirring at his desk restlessly. After hours of being unable to find a path to his dream of a truly free Russia. While democracy had been theoretically in place in Krukishkin's Federation, it was at best a lackluster excuse for one. The legislature had no real power, bound by an endless arcane statutes and codex. From arbitrary presidential speeches, he had barely scraped into leading the Federation in the system for Krukishkin's own hubris. It was now his job and his job alone to fix it, although he knew it would not be easy. It had been hours of nothing but toiling and unsuccessful ideas on how to mend this rotting system until Shukshin finally came to a new realization. He finally snapped from his stupor, realizing that at last how he could make the fix of broken system laid in front of him. How he could put the failings of Okurshkin and the Sudaliki behind him. How the system actually corruption in the systems of the Federation could be abolished, but not conventionally. No. They had to build a new constitution, a pluralistic system of coalitions. With his new epiphany at the foot of his mind, Shukshin painstakingly prepared his work and proposals to be finally revealed, and for the robber barons of Russia's past to finally be behind him. Shukshin rushed to the doom of building from his office, calling an immediate emergency meeting. The restoration of the nation's hope could wait for nothing and no one. Nothing in one. As the delegates settled in, irked by the president's sudden summons, Shukshin began to make his announcement to the doom and to the nation. Today, I hereby announce that new powers will once again be forever be allowed to establish themselves. No longer will the archaic and feudal systems of democracy that Pokushkin allowed to continue. The executive branch of the Federation will no longer be an omnipotent dictator, and its powers will be limited by a true constitution and reform legislature of the Federation. The whole of Russia has been seen as declarations of intentions, and even the Slovakia cannot stop a movement with the backing of a whole nation behind it. Call our old context and get some new backing for the movement. Reach out to the opposition. We cannot repeat our mistakes. Our opposition was the Slovakia, wasn't it? Get our old context. Get back for the new movement. Uh, old context. New movement. New movement means this one. So, what the heck? That's not new movement. This is new movement. Newly formed. So I'll go back and redo the save there. A glimmer of the dream. The delegates of the three parties sat near in total silence in the chamber. It had been hours since the party of the leadership, and a trail of assistance flowed into the room. None had spoken beyond perfunctory responses. Kantorovich and Koregain, the respective leaders of the Democratic Socialists and the Social Liberals, sat across from one another as the former wrote furiously into his notepad, and the latter appeared to be a mouthing or rehearsal to some speech. Shukshin stayed silent as he eyed each of them with worry. Each knew the importance of the conference, but none were willing to take the first step. Negotiations over the shared platform were slow and laborious, with none of the three sides willing to come to agreement. Every attempt to compromise only heightened the feeling of how utterly opposed each side was to the rest of the, the views of the next. It was only with the topic of Primakov that the winds of discussion changed. As the Soviet became more and more central to dialogue, so did the will to cooperate. None had to be reminded of the consequences should their opponents succeed, and the feuds among the coalition partners slowly became entirely trivial in comparison. Discourse shifted from how to work around the party's differences into how to use them against a common enemy. Minute by minute, discussion around the conference room table became nothing short of electric. Party representatives of every side, one by one, began to rise of their seats furiously as the kindle of enthusiasm became a wildfire. Every representative of the youngest secretary began coordinating policy plans with perfect synergy. Every strategy, every loophole to cut corporate power and Slovaki control was built upon and expanded until they were flawless and ready to be implemented to their fullest extent, effect, and they could just pass the bills to do so. Discussion lasts or, until the smallest hours of the night, as each left the room and air of change left with them. An alliance of pragmatism had formed into a sacred pact to protect that which each held a sacred above all else, and with every one of them, to the last, ready to do anything to see it done. Not with colleagues or partners, but fellow keepers of the torch of democracy. So much to be done, so little time, or just establish a party registry. Beyond the rap, there doesn't exist a uh, proper political parties within the Federation beyond a mess of special interest groups. Loose political coalitions of military men. A big part of the formation of a pragmatic democracy is keeping the entire system simple, while simultaneously being efficient and democratic. If we're going to keep these things relatively simple in the Russian government, we should establish a set of rules and guidelines for any political party wishing to join a government to ensure that the Federation is properly defined parties representing the people in the Federal Assembly. Root out corruption. Corruption is a cancer that has been slowly eating away the fabric, or eating at the political and social fabric of the Federation. It had been allowed to run rampant during the rule of the Siloviki, as well as corruption that allowed them to maintain their reins of power for as long as they did. With them mostly out of the picture, it is time to begin taking measures to tackle the political virus that is corruption. In order to do so, the president has ordered the uh, Suzba Besopasnosti to begin a secret internal investigation of the government to root out the most corrupt of the government and send the message out to those who seek to undermine Russian democracy. Corruption will not be tolerated. As now the AI has built up some more divisions to take us out. Whatever, it is what it is, you know. You to just beat him up as much as possible. Go do that. I'm not sure where the capital is now, but whatever. Let's go there. As long as we don't get encircled, that's what I really care about. 
Uh, we get 0.97 every single day. Advanced development research and stuff, whatnot. Uh, here, do that one. Body registry. A prosperous world. Oh my god. Uh, oh boy, that's a lot. Hold on, give us a second here. Uh, 75. Trains, armor trains, sure, why the heck not? Oh, that's a capital now. Okay, that's not good. A prosperous world. <clears throat> was it, was it, was that the liberal idea? Well, that was a question by Anatoly Karajin. Was often asked, what made their party different? Asked the leftists from the RAP, which argued for reforms while holding against broad change. What made them any different from the raving socialists? Asked the rightists from the socialists in the DSPR. Was it simply the temper and the policies? A neat middle ground for the professionals and the professors who haven't been hauled any policy. No, it's a liberal idea, a dream. The liberal dream is that of meritocracy, where uh, all men and women are equal, equal, where anyone can reach a top, but all are taken care of. It does not hate business, like the socialists, or desire some idealized collective management. Nor does it fetishize hierarchy, like the current capitalists. The liberals see the competition and the corporation is linked. Uh, cooperation, creating new comparative advantages that lead to great jumps of innovation. But the liberals also believe that they all desire to live, and to be able to make that leap into success if they have the guts to grit for it. That is a real meritocracy, is a real democratic society. Where anyone can truly make it, and the Russian Social Liberal Party, the RSLP, was going to build that gentle yet competitive society to build a new age where communism and all forms of despotism led to ruin, a plural and capitalist society would lead to a new age of Russia. Radical hope. What else do we have down here? We got that, but a uh, new insignificant car. Sixth car wasn't like most cities in Russia. It was located deep within the forests of the north. Practically irrelevant in comparison to other cities in European Russia, such as Perma Samara, yet for landed, Kantorovich, it was his home. It, it's what, when, what seemed like another lifetime ago, he was once an influential speaker or figure in the old Komi Republic. A respected mathematician who prevented the struggling economy from collapsing, yet he sat at the helm of the remnants of the DSMP or the DSPR as it is known now. Lenin stepped away from his desk and looked out of his office window. Western Russia was much poorer than Siberia, that much was true. Years of bombing and constant warfare still scar the land he so loves. The people were poor and the conditions were only starting to get better, yet with a reunification, it seems that a new opportunity has presented itself. With the rise of President Shukshin in the Federation at last came a chance for the dream of a truly equal Russia to become reality. The President opened the door once more to the old remnants like himself, and with it came a chance to break down the barriers of poverty that strangled his homeland since his birth. Lane and Smiles looked up to the flag of the Federation that flew proudly by the city. A dream of war. A falcon without wings. Oh boy. <coughs> what is this? Oh, tank stuff? Or something? Oh, we don't really probably need that. Maybe here? No, it's a little hard of time. Tanks, we're not going to deal with tanks. Anything else we really need? Uh, not really. We could get this one though, I guess. The All Russian Patriots Party headquarters was a grand modern building with full glass windows that jutted into the sky in central Novosibirsk. Inside, televisions constantly tuned into local news stations, along with Betamax, Betamax tapes that played stock footage of the party's message of jobs, growth, and country for any visitors. Beyond the glossy front-facing lobby, however, there were several large conference rooms with a central podium surrounded by rows of desks and chairs. All the highest quality mahogany, of course, complete with branded pens and notepads provided to each of those who attended one of the meetings held within. The largest of these conference rooms with softly cream-colored walls instead of blinding white held the most important meetings, and in this case, the secret elections for the leadership of the ARPP. Seated were the leaders of various ministries, or at least the leaders of those ministries before Shukshin had replaced them in a sweeping cabinet change. Alongside those bureauc old bureaucrats were his al their allies, representatives from the Siloviki, including several C-level officers. <coughs> The results are in. Alexander Pokrushkin, we thank, while we thank you for your service throughout the smutta, your recent failure to win the election against Vasily Shukshin has caused a great, us a great setback that threatens all of our economic prosperity. For that reason, the bodies have voted 2-1 to one to elect a new leader for political and economic interests. At that moment, a heavy-set man with reading glasses in his hand stood up and rushed down some steps up to the front of the room. He hastily grabbed the microphone with a moment to catch his breath, looking at the crowd. My friends! I thank you for the opportunity to lead this distinguished group of people along with my predecessor, Marshal Pokrushkin. I will be brief. The method of control in the po populace brutally simply will not work in a modern age. No, something different is needed. An approach which maintains the ability of our friends to operate which, uh, while also allowing the people to express themselves. A new type of democratic system that balances business and the population with this balance, of course, towards business. A new type of patriot. A pursuit of peace. Anatoly Korjin made a quick correction to his tie as he proceeded up the steps, several pages of documents in hand. As we continue up the curved path to the stage platform, we can help but be amazed at the rapid progress this party made just a short few years ago. This political movement was all but banned by Pokrushkin and his slugs, but he's, here he stood ready to bring his party into the limelight with thousands watching from the seats of the party convention. I've been a long, hard battle to reach this moment. He still remembers early life under Bukharin's boots, uh, and how he saw it entirely change when Pasternak first declared the Republic. They had never forgotten the sight of men carrying the rider's flag as they marched through the home street in Kansk. There wasn't a single drop of bloodshed in the whole city as it was raised over the Capitol building. Of course, times would change as the bandits and fools of the Black Army swept through the city in the wake of war. He fled, and was only a teenager to Novosibirsk, a central Siberia, around, collapsed around him. That contrast between the days of Pasternak and the, uh, the Smuto would never leave his mind. War and conflict had needlessly ruined millions of lives, and for nothing, as he worked towards his career in the psychiatry. 
His convictions never subsided. By the time his home city was under the Federation's control, he had already become a leader in the intellectual circles of politics. Slowly, popular support grew in the tandem with Shukshin's power reforms, and now he stood at the precipice of his efforts as he approached the stage podium and began to speak. Fellow party men, I stand before you all as a leader of a struggle, not for war destruction, but a struggle for peace and prosperity to the nations of the world. With this document I hold in my hand, the Russian Social Liberal Party is officially registered by the Russian Federation, and progress towards a world without calamity can finally commence. Thank you all. The crowd burst into enthusiastic cheers and claps. Corrigan smiled as he looked into the cameras. Phoenix was going to explode when they saw the coverage he was getting. The crowd faded from his mind as he waved to the reporters and restrict lobbying. Since the founding of the Federation in the early 50s, the corporations have tightened severe and Phoenix have used their vast monetary resources to influence the officers and politicians of the State Duma. While this may have been acceptable under the reign of Alexander Pokorishkin, with the promise of pragmatic democracy underway, this can no longer be permitted to continue any longer. The rat may not have the means to stop all corporate influence on the representatives of the Russian people, but there are ways we can restrict the lobbying and reduce their sway in government. Shutting the door, huh? Bro, get out. Oh, Project Avacon success. The TKB-011 assault rifle has passed its field test and is now officially ready to begin mass production. Initial concerns about the rifle's lightweight construction was adjusted to increase durability while keeping the weight low. A rifle and testing that actually have found the TVK-011 to be good for engagements to close to medium ranges, although it actually does become a concern at long ranges. It's not an issue as the rifle is intended for deployment with our air mobile infantry, who are trained for close quarters, firefights rather than long range battles. The commanders of the Air Mobile Divisions are already clamoring to receive the first shipments of the new guns. With a dedicated AR designed specifically for helicopter borne infantry finally available, we're anticipating a significant increase in combat ability of some of our most elite and specialized troops. A soldier is only as good as his gun. Nice. No, you got out of there. Which is good. 51 billion? Not enough. 73 billion? 73.2% on me. Not good enough. Root all that corruption from the shadows. Uh, Oleg walked down the hallway towards his office. The representative of Magadan has spent today's session in the state demo arguing against the proposed changes to government made by the RAPP on the benefits of behalf of Phoenix. <clears throat> the, dates, the debates have been excruciatingly long, and the rumors that the president and his clique were hunting down the corrupted Siloviki wasn't doing anything to soothe his troubled mind. He approached the door to his office, keen hand, when he noticed that it was already open. Slowly entered and froze when he saw someone sitting on his on the desk with a folder in his left hand and a pistol in the other. Dimitri, what are you doing here? Oleg asked as he closed the door behind him. Dimitri Ivanov stood up and shoved the folder into Oleg's arms. Why don't you tell me, Representative? The monster said, his tone neutral and his expression unchanging. Slowly, Oleg opened the folder and saw within it for several documents, receipts, and photographs, all evidence of the collab his collaboration with Phoenix of Corporation. While the bribes took he took since the president's inauguration to office, the representative closed the folder and looked at the reclusive agent in his eye. You're here to arrest me? Oleg asked. Fortunately for you, those are my orders, but President Shukshin will no longer tolerate corruption. You have to cut ties with Phoenix and know any other organization you have dealings with. If you want to keep your reputation intact, I'd recommend handing in a letter of resignation. Your actions are treasonous. I consider this an act of mercy, Representative Volkov Dmitri explained, as he put his gun away and walked over to the door. Of course, if you mention anything about a meeting here, the President will be the least of your worries. Ola quietly nodded as Dmitri left the room. He said he set the folder down on his desk and sat down. He was quiet for a moment before reaching for his pen and began writing his resignation letter. Fighting fire with fire? And the Federal Assembly. Much time has passed since Shukshin's inauguration of the presidency, and at last, he and the RAPP have finally secured the ma first major victory since the reunification of the motherland, the official creation of the Federal Assembly. The first major piece in the mission to achieve a pragmatic democracy is it is designed to represent the will of the Russian people and ensure the preservation of democratic principles within the Federation. Uh, well, the first major hurdle out of the way, we can begin to move our focus on other important issues in the Federation that require the government's attention and bring forth a better Russia for uh, the Russian people. Shut in the door. Uh, as per usual, Vadim had arrived at Krasnoyarsk on the time with an envelope in his hands. Uh, he stepped up to the door of a large house in the city's outskirts and knocked three times on the door. After a few moments, the door opened and came out Vladimir, the city's representative in the state Duma. What the heck are you doing here, Vladimir demanded as he eyed down the young man before him. It's severe, sir, to be frank. They're not happy with the proposed changes to the government and they want your help to stop that from happening. Vadim explains he went on to hand the envelope to the representative. Vladimir pushed it back. Are you guys insane? I can't be caught with your money. Shukshin's agents got knocking on the doors of every Siloviki with a cropping record. My job's on the line here. I'm sorry, but I can't take your money anymore, Vladimir explained, looking over the young man's shoulders. What about the proposal to changes in the government? Vadim asked slowly as he pocketed the envelope. But Vladimir sighed. I have to accept it. My popularity has plummeted in recent weeks if I, if I say no to this. Sorry, believe it or not, the will of the people actually matters now, and I have to go along with it if I want to see my office next year. 
Vladimir quickly slammed the door in his face, leaving a very surprised young man standing out in the cold. He sighed as he stepped away from the house, wondering how on earth he was going to explain this mess to his superiors. Another pawn knocked down. Looking beyond. With Russia reunified under a singular banner once more, it's telling the Russian people to look out to the world beyond once, once more. Outside of the Federation's boundaries exist many nations and empires that fight for power in the great global chess match that is the Cold War, which primarily rages on three major main powers. The U.S. of A, the title leader of the free world, the Japanese Empire, the hegemon of East Asia, and the German Reich, the master of Europe and our greatest enemy. Presently, despite the size of numerous achievements made in recent years, the Federation's global position is comparable to England. A master of its land, but not region, forever undermined and threatened by nearly, nearby powers. <clears throat> For Russia to be, to be geopolitically weaker than its Italy is a humiliating reality and one that the Federation is not willing to abide by. Unlike their old friends in England and what remains, or in, remains of France, the Russian Federation can project its influence across a considerable portion of Eurasia and reassert itself as a global player of the international stage once more. It will take time and effort for Russia to be able to reclaim its status as a great power, something not easily achieved in the near future. We can, however, return to the grand steps of Central Asia and reassert ourselves as the gardens of Eurasia once more. Cool. As we're still trying to finish this up here as well. As we're still trying to core more stuff here too. That's Malinia, Bashkiria, why not? We definitely do not have the industry comparable to Germany at all, but whatever. Inclusion of Turkiskins. Wow, that's a lot of divisions there. Let's hang out for now. Thing out. Oh, we have more money. Sweet. Going straight up, going straight down. I love it. Oh my god, that guy's taking so long. Eight days from military police four, not bad. Actually, dead. It's now 6.2 billion, even though we converted some of these guys over. Oh, well. I, oh, maybe I converted them. After I made, before I made the save, or after I made the save. <clears throat> oh, don't crash! Don't crash! Don't crash! Don't crash! Please, okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Ah, uh, took your sense falling apart. Pretty good. Do you need help? Or no. Yes, maybe. Oh, first step. Uh, restriction. Oh my God! Oh my God! There's so much here. It's gonna be a lot longer than I thought it would be. Uh, he mumbled to himself, re reading his speech over and over in a monotonous manner. manner. His first speech as the President of the Russian Federation is glimpsed into the new era of democracy for Russia, the weight of the occasion pre pressed on his shoulders as he walked into the Duma. As he looked upon, the country's freely elected officials, from those to his right to those far to his left, pride in his people and his country and filled him with energy and newfound confidence. I thank the members of the Duma for meeting with me on this day. It's a monumental moment for both the free world and the Federation. The winds of democracy have breathed life into Russia and the people, and we must not care the torch that has been handed to us to keep its ideals alive. We should begin building Russia back up to the anarchy through this, those, this road shall be arduous. The people have no health care. They die from common diseases that have been vaccinated decades ago. Our people believe that they are defeated by an evil menace. On this to say, we must bring back pride to our country to make it a country worth being proud of. Those in the Duma looked on with interest. All could agree with these basic ideals, even the radicals and the most right and left-wing parties. Shukshin continued towards a more controversial part of the speech. But we must also build a country that is truly free, if truly democratic, for posterity. It cannot be said that this one election is a gasp of democracy and drowning authoritarianism that has ruined our country's cell. We are only tepidly embracing democracy while a jackboot of uncaring oligarchy of corporations holds us in bondage on the Siloviki, who will himself build our nation up who now seek to dominate control what belongs to the Russian people. This cannot be. We cannot allow our people to languish. If we truly want a nation all can be proud of, it must provide for its people to educate them to heal them when they are sick so that they may be love it and sacrifice for it. Immediately, the deputies from the RAPP began to clap ferociously and cheer, but the rest of the room was more quiet. Then the liberal RSLP began to clap respectfully, followed by the left-wing DSPR. Soon, like a fire, the vast majority of the deputies began to clap and even stand up. Shukshin beamed with pride and hope for a new pluralistic Russia. Thank you all. Your trust will not be misplaced. Economic liber liberation. Ooh. An equal federation. Not bad. And, uh, oh, to the people. Not bad, too. Our nation's health. I love this. There's so much here. Cut the red tape. Ooh, that's not bad either. Economic liberation. For a federation to truly, truly be free, more is needed than this whole ballot box. As the people cry out for another fundamental type of liberation, that of the economy. We'll make a renewed effort in order to bring the people a free workplace so that their wages shall not be held hostage and their lives will not be nothing but constant squalor. The people will be held hostage by faceless corporate overlords no more, but instead have freedom of choice in the workplace, a dream where once thought unachievable in the federation, no longer will the lives only be to line the pockets of the establishment, but to seek out their own destiny. Beautiful. <clears throat> Fed off the corporations. A helping hand. 
With the use of anarchy in the Russian waste, millions of within our Federation remain under the poverty line, not even having the capability to afford any water or food, let alone the luxuries that Shukshin's Federation supplies. This cannot stand. With the help of other parties in the Federation, Shukshin has introduced a bill to support more of those less fortunate by society. The people who are forsaken by the previous warlords shall be raised back into greatness, and we will forge Russia into what it once was, a nation of millions, united and prosperous. <coughs> Help him out. Oh. Federal Assembly. Oh my god. Representation Act. An exception of the Federation. The Constitution explicitly says that the seats of the Federal Council are to be appointed by the government, not by elected by the people. This law was brought in alive predominantly at the behest of the Slovakia and their influence in our politics. After extensive lobbying and the attempt on President Ashukshin, it's time that we crumble the Slovakia and their influence by ensuring that should they come to power, their dominance over the Federation would Council would not be absolute. Out of 450 votes, we have 245, which is not bad. Oh my god, how many parties do we have? Coalition, we have 93 senators and 270 uh, deputies. Coalition unity is the average child support of parties that are in the coalition. When voting, those in the coalition will not use their opinion, but rather coalition unity plus another bonus. ARPP, or as the opposition, DSPR, friendly, 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 neutral. Oh, they even have pictures of these guys. That's cool. Wow. Brimakov. Ligachov. Oh, so we can interact with these guys, huh? <clears throat> 7 million US dollars from life of bribes. Though disdain sometimes progress, progresses, uh, we desire to simply achievable with, with conventional means to win the impossible battle, we must be adaptive. Game 15 opinion, make token concessions. Though there may be some discrepancies, big or small, in terms of economic, foreign, cultural policies, some underlying principles shared between parties, especially certain factions who may be more sympathetic towards our cause. Let us embrace the will, or embrace some of the beneficial arguments to show our willingness to continue cooperation. More beneficial towards, uh, more effective against members of a coalition. Uh, other members of the coalition would rather have us stick to what we believe than have a false sense of the unity. Sit down with party leaders. Uh, sometimes a direct meeting between the parties with a formal or informal is critical in maintaining our allies and fighting new ones. But we seek to unify our people, not divide them. Accuse of populism. Um, though we endorse social movements in recent years, some politicians have been increasingly branding themselves as the vanguard of the people. Some have been making rousing speeches across the country, making ridiculous claims about the, some sort of state conspiracy against people that they're fighting against. Due to so far literacy and political education, many systems are falling for these those cheap tricks. We must catch them before rowdy populism hurts the country's reputation. Loses 10 opinion. I don't mind spending a little bit of money for this. Oh, we can only do it once. Okay. Interesting. 22 days left. That's actually really cool. I like that. Good job. If the devs are watching, that's awesome. I love it. It's going to be a pain in the butt sometimes. We'll probably get through and try to make work, but I love it. For now. Until it pisses me off too much. <laughs> Ah, uh, the devs have done a great job so far, it seems like. We've got to keep an eye on that stuff up there. British millennia, global conflicts. Cool. With strength, increase popularity of the ARPP. Sympathy. Oh, we have a little bit of money, huh? It ain't much, but whatever. Poverty begin to improve with hope. Kind of like hope, but 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 uh, poverty. Protections against famine. Support small businesses. Work of protections. Well, I don't know the DSPR. RIP. They're not even here. They're more conservatives. Well, they like us the most, so go with them. I, I per personally prefer hope, but with sympathy. With Shukshin's bill being proposed, we've decided to gain support from the Socialists and the DSPR, being the most radical stance on the bill, believing it to be too moderate in some circumstances. However, with some of the compromise, no doubt, no cost will come with their own people to our own people and civilians. With the support of the DSPR, the right of the unions within the corporations will be strengthened immensely, allowing these abused by the system to remain in their position and be free from unfair displacement from the workplace, leading to inevitable bankruptcy. Workers' rights will also be strengthened so we can finally confine power to be the monster of the past. <coughs> and I'll personally prefer hope, but whatever. How many more days left for this one? Seven days. <coughs> Excuse me. My voice is so bad right now. Six billion. Look at that. Oh, so good. So good. Oh. Hey, two things are done. Nice. Um, 
Start researching things that don't matter as much. Railway guns? Okay. We do a cold cup of coffee because I forgot it before I started recording this video, so it's kind of cold now, but whatever. Provisions against famine. Um, support small businesses, expertise, or agriculture. It honestly doesn't matter. Yeah, either one, really. Support small businesses. The Federation of Old consistently made itself an enemy of the small business. Under President Pokrushkin, we strung up, strung up them. Also, if you're, if you're about better health care quality, please go ahead. Strung them up. And red tape and favored the government's corporate backers over the needs of the working man. Now we'll rectify the issues that have plagued the Federation for decades. No longer will red tape uh, heart business or engulf small businesses. No longer shall our country hold them back. Special provisions may be granted to up-and-coming stores so, so they may survive and thrive in our economy. Beginning today, we bring the Federation of the Solidity Kingdom of yesterday one step further and from memory. And a new Federation of hope and dreams of tomorrow and one step closer. For divisions against famine. Not a bad idea. Oh, look at that political power. Holy crap. Okay, I've kind of forgotten about the war here, too. Get all done. And Project Millennia. I don't forget about that, too. Mm. There you go. Oh, was it because of this thing? No major bills are being voted. Oh, we have the council here, too. We have 170. Oh. 450. 170 total. Uh, oh, so we have 93 senators in the council. The elections. Holy crap, what the heck. Oh, this is beautiful. This is so cool. The presidential race is not an election season. Restricted. Hold a rally. Popularity by a little bit more. Decrease the popularity of the most influential party in the region by 6%. Siberian district. Far Eastern district. Ural. Volga. Northern. Oh my gosh. The next election is in 76. This is so cool. I love it. I love the GUI for this one. Provisions against famine. At President Shukshin's time as Mayor Barnall, he came to intimately understand the importance of supply routes and feeding the Federation's people. In accordance, we shall remake supply lines across Russia so that all its people may have a consistent food supply. If we are truly to build this Federation and in the last land, we must never live in a fear of famine ever again. The lack of cultural centers and infrastructure Russia shall see sweeping modernization in an effort towards our goal of fam famineless Russia. With this bold new plan, even the most isolated villages will be able to receive their grain and provisions through fire, the fire and flame if necessary. Awesome. Man of the people. Hmm. Can we actually win there? Maybe, maybe not. Hold for now. The streets of Zlotas are slick with tears. The brackish air stinks of exhaustion and dread, not the terrible bullet wound or a sobbing, a throbbing sore, but deep pounding certainty of a miserable future. The city's children remember when the Yevgeny Dragunov broke free of the sullenness and promise them a future prosperity and freedom. They hoped and prayed and fought for the future. Like Daedalus, the inventor, they escaped from the horrors of anarchy by strength of arms and strength of mind, building utopia in the midst of agony and apocalypse. But Zotas was conquered by pen and by bullet. Her dream was slaughtered. <clears throat> Her people lost their homes, their freedom, they lost everything, and into the wreckage of a dream deferred to lope the three jackals, severe phoenix and titan. The corporate behemoths crushed the city between motor di uh, diamond molars, tossing good men and women out of their homes and turning over owners and employees. Entrepreneurs and businessmen delved into sales clerks or cashiers or beggars. <clears throat> the dream of a free Zlatos is dead, but the people remain. The people must be protected. When President Shukshin called for new parties to be formed, parties would counter the dom domination of the mega corporations, Alexei Novikov answered, but I can't do it. Alone, Alexei said to the enraptured crowd, Zlatos needs a voice. We're more than an appendage of Novosibirsk, we are not a dumping ground for corporate products. Our mother city is ancient and venerable. Opulent and proud, and she deserves to be heard at the federal level, he said. Alexei slammed his fist into the podium. My opponent, Mr. Novikov, is nothing but a tool of Phoenix Corporation. Those parasites all buy up every factory and every business in the city until they own everything. How many folks in the audience are small business owners? Nearly a quarter of the room raised their hand. Only three of them were plants. Phoenix and Novikov, they want to steal your property out of you, under you. They want to own you. They want to own your family. And we're going to let those sons of guns in Slaver City? The crowd thundered as one. Heck no. Workers Protection Act. The current conditions of our workplace are beyond miserable. If we should claim to be a developed country, this cannot go on like, on like again. We are far behind in terms of enemy and, and many amenities and resources other countries have had for the workers, from the safety of being horrid and workers barely having benefits or rights with the Workers Protection Act there shall be no more. Now our workers will feel safe and secure in a working environment, hopefully at least. That being said, um, we are going to do thin out the corporations. The accursed mega corporations of the Federation have corrupted and ruined every life and inch of land in Russia with their greed and desire for power. For the first days of our nation during the smooth day to now, they've dominated every facet of a government and nation. 
All the work we've done to better the nation has potential to be desecrated and left in ruin by the women of the corporate suits and their cronies. We must cut them down to size before they attempt to see our hopes of a better tomorrow dash before being brought to fruition. As we have done since uh, President uh, Shukshin took power, or took office, really. We should continue to whittle them down until they are nothing. A businessman doing business. Alexei Novikov sat back, sift back to the dining room of Moluska. The restaurant smelled of fresh flowers and wine, but he barely noticed. His suit was too tight in the waist, and then when he sat, his pants legs sapped out a quarter inch too high on his legs. There's no question Alexei would have to hire Taylor Zlatusti, of course. The Cosa del Belgio, his dining companion said, is disastrous. Good Belgian chocolate is so hard to find these days. I think that idiot is wasting it on a chocolate covered muscle. The old man shook his head. And Alexei glanced at the menu. What kind of restaurant only serves mus mussels? Well, what do you recommend, he asked. Nothing. I've eaten at Moluska eight times now, five dinners, two lunches, and one takeout in the regional office. The food is crowded, the service is mediocre, and the wine is overcosted. The old man extended his hand across the table while the CMO's son in law owns a place. I meant Antula Yahontal, Chief Financial Officer of Titan Guru. Thank you, Mr. Yahontal. I brought a list of policies and proposals we should discuss at convenience, of course, Alexei said. I doubt it shows these laws will improve productivity in the Euro region by 15. Yahontal cut him off with a wave of the hand. I don't care. He leaned back and stretched, nearly knocking your trade muscles on uh, which is his hands. Mr. Novikov, we don't care much about your policies. We need relationships in the Duma. Give me a reason why Titan should back you. He took a sip of his pearl white wine. What can you do for us? My campaign is based on returning prosperity and refuting your Western Siberia. That's for our patriotic pro business policies that will help us rebuild and eventually retake Moscow, Alexei like said. You all hunt over all his eyes. Mr. Novikov, I deeply care about honesty. I don't have time for that elevator pitcher and turns road for you. Tell me what you want or I'll enjoy my lunch alone. Fine, he said, Alexei looking Yohontov straight in the eye. I want Phoenix out of his house. They're forcing my neighbors and my family to the red line. Do you want to, your, to hand your biggest competitor a monopoly on the finest industrial and human resources in Western Siberia? Or do you want to make a deal? Look, it's all yours. It's all on you. If we could pin a mirror, that'd be great, but I kind of doubt we can. But you never know. Ah, good. Workers' Production Act and Phenothic Corporations. We read it earlier. Ah, so we should have enough. As long as we have 226, we should be good, right? Can you be friendly with these guys? $7 million? Who gives a crap? There's only $7 million. A letter from the CEO. To employees of Titan Welding Company. A corporation. The challenge and privilege of uniting, consolidating, and integrating our team across Western Siberia to maximize corporate synergy and to play off each other's core competencies was an exciting opportunity for myself and for Titan Group. As our team has grown, I've seen each of you grow with it. I'm proud of every single one of you. However, as the business environment in Western Siberia has developed, a company's leadership has grown concerned about cost of revenue ratio. Our first priority as a fully owned subsidiary of the Titan Group is to become profitable and to maximize the parent company's return on their investment. Company leadership will be closely watching the development of the Western Siberian elections. We're deeply concerned about regional dynamicism and putting a culture of opportunity and productivity in a new home. When I cast my vote, I'll be looking for a candidate that can return prosperity and freedom to Western Siberia. I'll be voting for someone who supports patriotic pro business policies that will help the Russian Federation rebuild and retake Moscow. Let's work together as a team to elect a candidate that will vote for your company and your job. Remember, Election Day is a company holiday. Dan Van Dijk, uh, uh, Chief Executive Officer, back to work. <coughs> Implement a corporate tax, huh? Ooh! <laughs> Subsidize family farms. Implement a corporate tax. The assistance of the Federation to pay their fair share. In taxes for the greater good of the nation, a handful of corporate suits are allowed to escape their civil duties for no benefit other than their own pocketbooks. Oops, my bad. Uh, it's an absolute disgrace both to the people and to the government that they are allowed to escape the rule of law on no other basis than greed. To combat this, we begin to institute extensive corporate taxes that bleed them off their most basic of revenue streams. Their true effective beginning, direct correcting the corporate plague upon their lands, begin with this legislation. Go to the torch. And now the roses. Subsidize family farms. Of the many fronts in our war against Omega corporations, one that is often overlooked is uh, that of the agricultural industry. Uh, these are there are seldom farmers, few farmers who are not forced to operate under the corporate heel of the wealthy. We must put an end to this practice. We will attempt to counter corporate dominance over agriculture with extensive subsidies for independent family-run farms. By decentralizing the industry, we lay the groundwork for demonopolizing the most basic of our country's needs: food for the masses. Many factors consent. Uh, Nikolai Orlov jaunted to work as he bit into the perfect egg sandwich, two slices of fresh tomato from his wife's garden, two hunks of toast and buttered bread, and a single egg, fried in butter, salted and peppered, and dusted gently with garlic powder. It was heavenly the kind of sandwich he never could have made in the anarchy. Shukshin and the Federation had done good by him as Nikolai walked down the be beaten country path, a portable radio carrier began to murmur. Brothers and sisters of Western Siberia, the advertisement began when you marshal the polls this election day, vote for prosperity and patriotism, vote for pro-business policies we need to rebuild our home, vote Alexei Novikov. 
No, uh, Nicholas smiled his, uh, at his sandwich and continued on his way to work. <clears throat> By the time Nikolai arrived at the front gate of the Titan Laboratory Equipment Incorporated, his fingers were coated in tomato juice and egg yolk. With seven minutes before shift started, he tiptoed into the men's bathroom, stopping on the way to offer a quick good morning to his good friend Nino. An odd guy but kind, as Nikolai scrubbed his callous hands under a stream of cool water, dozens of posters emblazoned with the flag of the Federation loomed behind him. A vote for Novikov is a vote for Moscow. One shot in. Prosperity and freedom, patriotism and liberty. Vote Novikov, its brother screamed. Nikolai dried his hands and continued on his way to work. As he stepped onto the work floor, dozens of machines rolled before him, cutting glass, shaping plastic, and injecting malformed product. He smiled, looking looked like the snatchy fan had broken anything too important for once. Nikolai strode to his workstation, affixed his safety goggles, and began his workday. Five minutes passed before Mr. Nino Vino Grado, his su supervisor, passed by his workstation. Nikolai, hope you're doing well. How's the old girl doing? he asked. Nikolai shot a smile at his manager, stronger than a mule's kick, sir. I think we'll make, make quote today, he said. Vino Grudov nodded. Good, I'll note that down. By the way, corporate asked me to pass on that election day will be company holiday. Who are you going to vote for? Nikolai scratched his chin and thought for a moment, then found his answer. I'll think about for Novikov, sir. Do we have something here for that? <clears throat> my apologies, my voice is just... It's just weird, man. It's just weird. 247 votes, of course. Go. Can we do this again? No. Okay. Elections. Well, it doesn't look like we have elections right now. Error, controlled region by the Japanese Empire, unable to access data. It says elections, but we have no elections right now. Okay, whatever. If you get in there and get circle these guys, that'd be great. Ah, yes. Happy September, everybody. Happy September. Beautiful. Ah. Now does it affect the economy? That's the green now is better, not bad. Probably hurts growth, but whatever. Subsidizing them, their family farms. Why not? We'll do that one too. Go with the torch, RSLP, um, or DSPR. I kind of go with the other group because since we went with the, what, the more socialist group last time. <clears throat> To help balance things out a little bit, go with the torch. First instruction has begun the first stages of implementing his vision for the future of the Federation with one core piece of being called a piece of legislation, the Environmental Protection Act. A bill that will finally roll back the many years of environmental damage that our motherland's endured. However, we mustn't dare temper or tamper with the already delicate piece of such a plan. Along with other parties, we would inevitably bring new and unnecessary complications to an already precarious proposal. And sure, we must ensure our party's pure vision comes to fruition. Actually, we do that. How do you. Uh, maybe we should do the DSPR. They do have more senators and whatnot, and deputies. <clears throat> Soon, President Shukshin will begin to enact a bell he's been dreaming of for a long time. The Environmental Protection Act. And with it, the vast beauty of our land could finally begin to shine once more. However, it's worth noting that such proposals could be used to further rope new allies. With the assistance of the DSPR, we'll be able to ensure that this legislation truly reflects the will of our people while getting some new friends in the political scene. Soon, President Shukshin's visions will be realized, and the land at last shall begin the healing process. Well, I'll probably get to go with them, in all honesty. <clears throat> Yeah, we're not using these guys at all. Uh, sure. Upsk. The Environmental Protection Act. There are very few matters which are as personal to the present as the environment. Furthering protection for the Earth is a matter that's been, gone, been pushed for strongly throughout his entire presidency. And with the passing of the Environmental Protection Act, his personal crusade in the pursuit of a clean federation free pollution has finally been brought to fruition. No more will the people of the nation be forced to see its natural beauty destroyed in the name of profit. Indeed, a great victory has been achieved with this act. Our land will be as clear as the sky, and corporate greed can do nothing to stop it. Cool. Uh, open Al Khanai National Park. A breed of countries, land of many marvels, and natural sights and wonders. Irreplaceable uh, landmarks which we have yet to protect. From the deepest lakes to the tallest mountains, the shadow of insecurity looms over the nation's wildlife and flora as they wait to be destroyed in the name of corporate interests. To remedy this unsustainable state of affairs, we should open the Al Khanai National Park, the first of many on a road to a clean, protected natural environment. The people should see the vibrance of a motherland's landscape without fear of smog and dust. We replaced with good uh, pollution regulations. Nice. And Barat's new attraction. Cool. 39.77 billion. Does it, oh, it was up higher. Oh, God, no. That's not good. No, we want to go lower. Lower. Fun, funny massacre, huh? Oh, well. Still good. Seventy-two. 
73. Um, uh, way too ahead of time. Helicopter stuff. Um, sure, we'll go with that one, I guess. I don't know. I think in the council. Elections. Okay. Um, an equal federation. We call ourselves a nation of the people, yet hundreds of thousands lack access to even the basic necessities of life. How can we call ourselves a nation of people? Our ideals of equity within the federation must be restored by Shukshin unless we become more hypocritical than the enemies of the federation. With the proposed vote by Shukshin, we must pick a set of support on the DSPR, the RSLP, but that must be put aside for now. But there will be universal equity, suffrage, and the freedom for all in the federation. I wish we could do some of the stuff too, over here, too. I wish we could start going to war with them and stuff like that, but whatever. You know. The opposition doesn't like us. The RAPP is very good. That's us. But also new attraction. The breeze that blew across Mount Al Kanai was a wild, warm wind, making it the perfect temperature to go out walking around. Boyan would have preferred these days a year ago because it would have meant walking to Naro Hazad with the birds chirping among the trees below. Before a long mediation, which could become a peace with the chaotic world. After the whole site became a national park, however, with warm weather it meant tourists flocking to get a look at the customs he had no understanding of. This year, Boyan explained to a group of about 20 he had led up to the stone patch as a temple gate, leading towards a Naro uh, Hazad. He gestured to a rock formation which formed a rough circle through which pilgrims would pass. When you pass through, you pass through which pilgrims would pass. And you also enter the world of the guardian deity, Alkanav Demchog, a place of healing contemplation. Boyan carefully moved his hands behind his back after finishing ex his explanation, returning his focus back to the tourists. Any questions? Most of them were barely paying attention to him. They had the cameras out taking pictures of the gate as well as a shrine that lay beyond. Some had snacks that they had brought with them. Across the gate there was a man currently walking in a circle around the shrine which which some in the group were giggling at the sight of. Boyan's heart thumped with anger, seeing his group treating their sacred traditions as one might expect a carnival. There's nothing he could do, though. He chose to work for the National Park to try and keep the traditions respected, and he would do his best to make sure that happened. Please make sure to treat this area with respect and reverence, Buyan explained, even as he had only had half the group's attention. This land is a sacred site, one that many pilgrims visit throughout the year. Now, please, feel free to explore the grounds, but be sure not to disturb any who are taking part in rituals throughout this area. The group was eager to look at more of the temple, most of them headed through the gate without a second thought. Buyan watched as one man dropped the wrapper for a bag of nuts on a stone below, completely ignoring the no litter sign right beside him. Dimit Chog's heart weighs heavily. Cut the red tape. Under the Siloviki, the Federation instituted a veritable mountain of red tape used as a weapon against any and all opposition to ensure the grip of power was absolute. One of the foremost problems this created was the bureaucratic issues that arose in attempting to form new political parties, making their practice nearly impossible. It would certainly be considered by some as a pointless task to attempt to unravel the mass holding back government bureaucracy, but the Federation and its president have no intention of letting this stop them. We'll slash government bureaucracy so we may pave the way for a truly pluralistic Russia, piece by piece. Voting Rights Act, a common ideal. We're going very red right now. Oh, they got it. Nice. The missing piece. Shukshin sighed as he leaped through the electoral reports from each of the Oblast. Even though they had won by a decent margin, it was still undeniable that both sides had made use of tactics like gerrymandering to gain unfair advantages in certain Oblasts. What should have been a route for the ARPP was instead turned into a sizable but tenuous victory. Not to mention uh, how much money the Soloviki had injected into the media. His eyes grew tired as the headache worsened, and struggling through report after report, the meeting with Bokrishkin and their unwise decision to drop down many, many bottles left Shukshin rather hungover with a massive headache, kind of like me right now. A headache only. Worsened by the twin difficulty of reforming the electoral system when reforms at all were going to be opposed at every step, even by his own party. Once he is in power, they'll believe they will never leave. Shukshin feared such an attitude would overtake his own allies. The hunger, hungover president tucked his hands into the pockets of his coat as he teetered to the window to get some fresh air. It was an nice of conflicting view of Barno, as always. The forest and field stretched into the horizon on one end with a jungle concrete and steel on the other. Shukshin cleared his mind and then sifted through the sack a stack of letters on his desk before one caught his eye. It was a proposal for a shift towards universal suffrage. A rather bold one considering Russia's traditional society, but tradition had failed Russia one too many times as did radical change. Shukshin Potter began to draft the, the beginning of the bill, one that would submit uh, Russia, where all would be given equal say. When do we start? A visitor from Tehran. Shapur of Bakhtiar was a wrinkled man, of course. <clears throat> With deep lines etched along his sides, uh, creating a thick mustache between wide, intelligent eyes, it was uncommon for such a new head of state to travel out of the country. The occasion was important enough that he found himself on a private Russian jet, making his way over to the industrial Novosibirsk in a well-attended university. Or, or well-intended formality. It wasn't lost on Iran's new prime minister that this was Russia's first formal alliance outside of the, Soviet, the former Soviet Union. The occasion was one that both sides took seriously. Bakhtiar himself knew that while he was respected in Russia, they were still attaching themselves to a small and precarious power compared to the U.S. Still, Bakhtiar was a loyal man and found his vows reflected more than in, in the independent than in the organization of free nations. Once they landed, the older man made his way down to the airplane steps for 
uh, down to come face to face with uh, our President Shukshin, uh, President, of course, of the Russian Federation. The man was young, hardly in his forties, and with a vibrancy to match. He was a man whose creases on his brow told a story of struggle and hardship, much like Bakhtiar's on under the Shabnau. Shabnau. Between the flames of radical extremism of all forms and sifting dictatorship, constitutional Iran and Russia were a sign that a different order, one made of respect for democratic rights, dignity for people, and moderation could survive and win. Shukshin held Bakhtiar's hand warmly. I am honored to meet you, Prime Minister. There's a very special day for both of our nations, he said. Behind him, crews of cameras and journals produced chittering clacks of cameras covering him in flickers. No, President, the honor is mine. Your assistance throughout our national struggle is something we will not forget. Let us go inside. There's much to be done to join our nations together in friendship. The two walked off to the presidential palace, ready to create a new bloc that would fight for liberty. The foundations of something greater. Owed to the people. Or establish the electoral committee. Eh, owed to the people. President Shukshin could never achieve this accomplishment without the people of the Federation. Our administration owes its very triumph to the people. For without them, control of the state could never have been wrestled from the corporations and the Siloviki. And of course, the people who lifted the president into office will become. The first and foremost to be considered in policy. The Federation is changing swiftly, and every advance towards a freer nation will be taken with the common man, not the oligarch in our hearts and minds. As we build a new Federation, we'll honor the masses who made it, of course, possible. Uh, beautiful, beautiful thing. First of many, huh? Part of the coalition, independent parties, Women's Rights Act. Do women deserve rights? I guess. Welcome to the party show, bump friends. Slap the electoral committee. Of all the corruption and destitution that rose from Siloviki, no was no more, more more apparent than the electoral system under Pokrushkin. Gerrymandering and intimidation became the norm, causing poll numbers to unrepresentatively fall for the enemies of the Siloviki and rise for the goons. The, these sadly common practices happened and delegitimized all components of the government, and no longer but no longer will allow this to happen. We'll establish an independent electoral committee to ensure the people will always have their voice in the government. The dream of a federation of the people comes ever so slightly closer to reality as we banish the remnants of the Siloviki. Beautiful. Still building. 65, huh? It goes up and down all the time. Idolism. Nico leaned back on his desk, his focus solely on the radio he had inherited from his late father. His father had been a Red Army soldier who had served under Yegorov during the West Russian War. A full fledged communist who perished during the West Russian Unification Wars, Nico, on the other hand, had grown to idolize Vasily Shukshin, the president of the Russian Federation. Since the fall of our Congos, Nico began supporting the man who fought for the liberty of all Russians from the forces of tyranny, battling the Siloviki in the halls of the Federal Assembly and challenging the Germans of the West. We never forget the speech the president had made following the proclamation of the Russian Federation. Russia is one, where words a young boy would never forget. Soon the song playing on his father's old radio faded away and the announcer began to speak. We hope you've enjoyed another brilliant song from Russia's rising star, Eduard Artemyev. Now from his home in Novosibirsk, President Shukshin will be giving a speech in regards to a proposed bill that will reform the rights of the Federation's workers for the better, the voice of Radio Arkhangelsk announced. Nico leaned in closer with a smile on his face as the voice of the President flickered through the speakers. The President speaks in a breath of Russian culture. For decades, Russian culture has been swept away in the chaos of the smuta as the people became more focused on the survival than the tradition or art. Many of our cultural works and achievements have begun to fade into history, but this will stand no more. To return Russia to greatness, we must first rejuvenate its culture. The slow decay of Russian contributions to arts and culture must come to an end. Whether young or old, the people of Russia will be able to remember the her heritage of greatness from a simpler age when people will focus on happiness and not on fear, of course. And we're done with getting that last one. Beautiful. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Ah, uh, screw it. Just get this one done anyways. It doesn't matter too much. Infantry weapon upgrades. Advanced motorized equipment, yes. Better supply range, uh, better supply truck attrition, yes please. And happy December, everybody. Oh, man. Uh, this campaign's gonna last longer than I thought it, it, I thought it was gonna be, which is fine, because, like, this is awesome. Seeing what the, the devs have done. Awesome from Brave New World. Awesome, 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 awesome. Apes and growth is not good enough. It's getting better, though. Oh. Higher cost, but more taxable population, right? And more stability, which doesn't matter too much, but whatever. Uh, we can do that. Ooh, yeah. Hmm. But in the meantime, we have that. Ooh. That's not good. A little more loyalty, of course. Power would be nice, too. Um, how much do we get every single day? Almost one. Almost one. Not n quite enough. We haven't done the RSLP yet. Uh, let's take a look see here first. How can we do that? Neutral. I kind of want to see what the, these guys... We've done the, the, all this stuff over there. Encouraging new thought. Burning patriotism. The A-R-P-P. -P. Well, we don't want the A-A-A-R-R-P. 
That's be nice to have, but we're going to go to the Christian Thought. Well, the recent reunification of Russia under the Russian Federation is a crossroads. With ARPP proposing a system of patriotism and pride, the DSPR and the RSLP have come to him with a proposal. Rather than encouraging pride and patriotism, of patriotism above all else, Russia will become a nation of philosophy, a nation of freedom and liberty, and a nation of its people, a nation of culture, a nation where all can think and speak freely. We'll embrace our true calling, that of prosperity, wisdom, and above all else, Russia. A night to remember. When Mikhail clung to his mother's arms, he examined the city blanketed in the winter snow. Years ago, he would remain indoors, isolating himself from the city beyond the windows of his room. He didn't have any friends, only his only company were parents and a collection of books. The years of anxiety felt during those years dissipated when the Federation had finally liberated his home city. Today was a special day. He and his parents had been waiting in the line, and the young boy grew increasingly confused with each passing moment. He saw many other adults whom all stood in pure excitement after a few minutes. Mikhail had finally worked up the courage to ask his mother what they were doing here. Today is a special day I hope you remember for the rest of your life, his mother replied. Before he knew it, they walked into the new theater named Perm's Firebird, and saw countless tables scattered around with chairs and plates around. It was warm and bright as a young man with an odd triangle-shaped guitar was playing as tune with his parents told him it was a Kalinka on the main stage. Soon enough, the trio sat down on the tables and then Mikhail began to read the menu. Most of the time, most of the items were foreign to him, many of the words he didn't recognize. His parents and later the waiter helped explain what each item was. During this reading, uh, his parents discussed many foods from their childhood they'd miss. And, Blini, what's that? And Mikhail asked. His parents stopped mid-sentence, and for the brief moment, he sensed a sadness before the smiles returned. It was something that they both loved to eat before the Swaska lovers tried taking everything away from us, but we're free now, and we can enjoy the food we miss so dearly, his mother explained with a warm smile. You're going to be a brother! Whoa! Whoa, where'd that come from? <laughs> That's funny. Uh, replace public with subsidized higher. Oh, yes. It would be according to a service of science to act as if they required nothing more than shoving a degree into one's hand and stuffing them into a lab coat at a research facility. The advancement of knowledge is just as a social endeavor as it is material, and a pursuit towards it must begin in every citizen, most importantly the young. School funding and equipment for scientific studies must be renovated from the ground up. Every microscope, every beaker must be up to the standards needed to create a generation ready to continue and further science beyond any who came before them. Every ruble put in this most sacred effort guarantees the prosperity for the Federation for decades to come. Expand uh, the Central Design Bureau. Ooh, more options, yay! The Central Design Bureau acts as a central and formal center for the Federation's research and development in science and technology, as head of which are scientific strides are coordinated and directed, and a body is only as capable as its brain allows, especially in science. If we truly revolutionize our nation's advancement of knowledge, it must be begin at the Central Design Bureau. The power and prosperity of the Federation depends on its success. Only a small spark is needed to cascade into a flurry of knowledge, and this is the start of the center of the nation's research. All we have to get, do is give the first push. I want to do this one. But I do want to do a common ideal. But these guys are bigger and more popular. Reach out to the DSPR. I'm going to go. I guess we're just going to go complete socialist for this one. We always knew that building a true democracy wouldn't be easy, but the pushback we have received from the mega corporations and their benefactors have been especially fierce. Fortunately for us, the fruits of our newfound pluralism are paying dividends, and our fellows in the DSPR are eager to support our enfranchising endeavors. Though we are by no means natural allies, our pride means nothing when the noble voice of every Russian hangs in the balance. Oh boy. Sure, why not? Honestly, with all this research, ooh, this is a hard time, why not? We might as well just dump more into Project Millennia. Because we're halfway there. Minus 20%? So be it. We're already halfway. Accelerate pump approval? Oh, heck yeah. I don't want to dump any more money into it. 62.7. Eh, it went down, but it's not getting better. Temp tax hike. That could help us out maybe a little bit more. I don't think that'd be really worth it. Impacting growth. It hurts growth, but this might help out a little bit more. Honestly, it won't help us cut down. It just lowers the deficit, if anything. So we're not going to do that for now. Because the DSPR. 248. Collection unity is 55%. They're very friendly. If we even got these guys, it wouldn't really matter too much. Opposition. Can we, like, is it possible to, like, get these guys on our side, maybe? What is this? Oh, is, is that compromising or something? 7, 12. Honestly, where we're at, it's actually pretty good already, so we're just going to keep it where we're at, maybe for now. Uh, our nation's health. Possibly one of Russia's most egregious oversights throughout its history has been the health of its people since the day of the Tsar. The healthcare system of the nation has been underfunded and overlooked by the leaders of the country, but this will continue no more. Our efforts towards a healthier federation free of illness must be pursued with the same vigor as any of our goal. A vast investment into the federation's healthcare and an effort to remedy the mistakes of the past must be implemented for the sake of a prosperous and healthy people. <clears throat> our efforts mean nothing if our people can continue to suffer from our neglect. So we get this one done and then we can start doing this. Holy crap! 1.2% more growth? There's never enough growth. Never. 
And it's gonna take you longer to research stuff, but I don't really care at this point. Pragmatic solution. Compromise with the Universal Coverage Act. The heck with that. The DSBR is conscious. Yes, we're conscious. Well, we're going D D DSBR anyways. The newly emergent democratic socialists have approached the president with a proposition, the complete nationalization of the Federation's healthcare system, and a joint effort between them um, and ourselves, or work to take the health of the people out of the hands of the rich. The action will not be taken lightly, but it is done It is done as what the DSPR considers a moral necessity. The corporations and the greedy will have one less means of control, and the people under their health will likely benefit as a result. However, these undertakings will not benefit or not be without its cost. The size and spending of our government may need to increase dramatically, but it's a necessity for a priority, the people. Expand healthcare funding. The basis upon which our federation was founded was an effort to protect the people of Nova Sibirsk in the dark sour. Yet even today we fall short of achieving that goal for all Russians. Until lives may have been, may have been lost, for the benefit of the mega corporations and the wallets to the private health care. Only the rich receive service as those under them rot away. To begin to remedy this plague upon the nation will redirect our expenses and increase the national budget to flood our measly health care system with an influx of revenue. We can only hope that this with this health care system should finally serve its more true purpose, lest our people lose more. Nice. And I propose universal coverage. Oh boy. Officials within the DSPR have drafted the first uh, the Universal Coverage Act, which, if passed, may potentially become one of the greatest edicts to ever go through the doors of the Duma. With one bill, all healthcare services will be placed under the control of the Federation directly and away from the mega corporations. Should it pass, they both have dealt a great blow to the mega corporations and immeasurably improved the lives of our citizens. There's no doubt the corporations will attempt to retaliate, but we shall stand ready against their efforts at all costs for the good of the Federation and its people. Anything else here? Coalition Unity? Not bad. Uh, friendly, friendly. Well, getting up to 50 is pretty nice. A pretty good goal, I guess. Council on 70. No major bills being discussed for now. Cool. I'm keeping a, a fund of political power just in case here, too. February, 6.5%. is green is good. Almost 10% growth. It's slowly going down, but not as much as it used to, which sucks. Uh, we're a corporate ol oligopoly. Hmm. And inflation, it's okay. It's not great. Oh, since we're here, too. More loyalty. If we're going to have any corporation loyal to us, it'll be them. It must be them. The People's President. Uh, President Shukshin is in every way possible an entirely different beast than his predecessor. His, man his mandate to cover not, not comes out from the bullet of a gun to the wallet of the rich, but his own people. This has never been forgotten. Through every act and bell, and the people and their happiness have always been at the forefront of the importance. The president's efforts have truly earned him the title of the president of the people. Russia's citizens deserve nothing short of leadership with the truth of intentions and something which the president has given them. Not with any gestures, not with false promises, but by doing what he feels is best, the corporations and their bribes be darned. But we're going to continue to do the first of many first. Success at last. We've managed to get enough support in the Duma for the passing of the Voters' Rights Act. It's an excellent first victory for the suffrage in the Federation, but it will not be as last. Well, the Act has now thankfully been able to speed through the Congress, or Congress, through a, a government uh, bureaucracy will set the stage for new reforms and laws for years to come. Finally, we'll be able to look forward to the future, knowing the most universal right of the people is now protected, and our dreams of a free and equal federation grow ever nearer. The right of the people to elect the government, free and fairly, will be disrupted never again. Oh, excuse me. Oh. I'm not voting. On, oh! Oh, they're voting on this one. Okay. Because I was like, oh, are they voting? What's going on? Oh, okay. oh we only do four to three, huh? Oh, well, whatever. Actually, you know what? Shove all those guys. Yeah, I want these guys. this guy to have everything here. Um, if we divide them up again, that's fine. I don't really care. A little ahead of time. Whatever. So, we have more than enough votes. Good. Are they still friendly? Good. Keep them up to 50, and then we'll keep switching. Oh! Well, there's that. Parties. There's this. And there's this too. Article 41 of the Constitution. Federation of the people, not corporations, while our state was once heavily reliant on the corporate power or corporate support, no longer the case, and the corporations have far less control over their affairs than they once did in Nova Sibirsk. As such, we intend to nationalize the healthcare system to provide equitable access to quality healthcare for all under the Federation. While undoubtedly an expensive endeavor, the Federation seeks to improve the lives of its people and for what a country, what is a country but a people. Very true. Which is why I want to do this one first, but whatever. Expand the bill. Among the many voices heard in the halls of government, there's one group that hasn't seen its calls answered yet. The women of the Federation. Our efforts are meaningless if we disregard such a large swath of our constituency, which is why recent measures to expand voting rights must be included in them. After all, can we truly be equal if we do not extend our support to women's suffrage in the same way all brothers have all, all others have seen? Of course, it won't be easy to generate support for this measure, but we cannot claim to be acting on the behalf of the people when we ignore millions of our own population. But do they want that right? Maybe. Oh, that's not good now. Oh, oof. oh it got worse. Oh. Social spending? Oh, we made it worse now, too. Oh, wait, we have a navy. We still have a navy? 
Why are we wasting money on this thing? Let's pause it so we don't have to spend uh, this money for the next month or two. No wonder we're not doing so well. We had a navy. Huh. That was poppy looking too. We're gonna check that out in a while. Sixty-three point one percent. Oh, it went back up. Oh god, no, that, that's not good. Hey, that's actually not bad. A quarter of the people live in poverty, which is not good. Tertiary schooling, my god, that's that's really good. Agricultural. I love that. I love Brave New World. It's it's it's, it's a very good submod for you know TNO. Very good. Admin efficiency, streamline bureaucracy with functional administrative system. No, with oil oil machine. Better uh, less consumer gets needed. A social spending modifier goes down even further. Drift factor gets better. Supply consumption factor gets better, doubles. Supply node range is better, which is very good. Daily political power gain, 20% doubles basically from the 10%. More stability, same uh, base taxable population, but awesome. Awesome, possum, possum, awesome. A little ahead of time, but who gives a crap? This one? It's a little ahead of time, but who gives a crap? God, I love TNO way too much, man. For so many. Expand the bill. Among the many voices heard in the halls of government, there is one group that hasn't seen its calls answered. The women of the Federation. Our efforts are meaningless if we disregard such a large swath of our population. I just read this one. What, did, what am I doing? I'm, I'm, I'm freaking out. Gather independent party support. Virtue for effort to pass a voting rights act into law, independent and minor parties within the Duma have come to our aid to rally against the AARP. AARP? No, ARPP. Which will carry favor to these normally unseen members of a government, so we may be able to pass this bill for the sake of the people. While normal circumstances would not endear us to these radical elements, a unified struggle in the fight for our federation against those who would see democracy dead must be pursued. While this shall give them more strength and embolden independent government elements, it's better than letting our efforts for this monumental bill for nothing, or let it fail. Don't we have more projects for the millennia? Well, not millennia, but the other stuff too? Oh, we're almost done here. Nice. What was that? Did it just jump up? Nice. <clears throat> Although the Federation is a beacon of Russian democracy and paper, the right of our people to cast a ballot isn't truly enshrined in law. Once a stopgap measure introduced by Pokrushkin ordered a piece of those calling for the greater democracy, we must not fully incorporate into, into our fundamental institutions of governance. Within this act are measures to curtail external influences in elections, as well as refining the process for collecting and telling our people's votes. Rally the coalition. For the Voting Rights Act to pass, we must cooperate with the coalition. We shall associate ourselves with them further and work together to realize our collective ambition. Though this shall hamper electoral dominance on the government as a whole, it is a needed compromise in the Women's Act of 1973. At long last, after months of resist of struggle, the Women's Rights Act has finally been sent through the Duma to be voted on promptly. Some believe this day would never come, thinking the corporations and the puppets would strike it down, but we've triumphed in our quest to bring universal suffrage to all who cry out for freedom in our land. Regardless of their income, political opinion, or gender, all in the Federation will soon be able to vote for representation in the government. Of all of our victories, this may prove to be our greatest yet. We finally achieved true progress and equality in what was seen once as a system built against the masses, and now we'll work at their behest. We're still going to increase our power here, though. All of the, everyone else. What? Uh, maybe we should empower the people. Well, that, may, that would make more sense if we could empower the people, wouldn't it? But well, I'll keep some political power here, too. Uh, six days left for this one. We've got enough votes. Coalition Unity is a little higher, too, which is very nice. Um, yeah. National Farmers Movement. Farmers. Farmers. So, does the Duma expand as well as the Council expand once you take over Moscow? That'd be kind of nice. You know what? Just do this for now. I don't care. We can reorganize these guys a little later. I don't even bother with it. Rally the Coalition. Economy. Ooh, half a billion. Pay down that debt. Better. Not great. Extremely high deficit. 8% growth is still not bad, though. It's almost 70 billion. Inflation is very high, though. Oh, good lord. Um, we could do. No one really help us out that much. Quarter billion. That's only 50 political power. Screw it. We'll do it anyways. That helps us out at all? No. <laughs> Whoops. Oh well. We're acceptable. Ooh, we can get to intermediate, huh? Extremely high deficit, though, kind of sucks. 62.8. Women's Rights Act, and then prepare a masterpiece. As we continue to remedy the problems that have faced us on the road to a freer, unified federation, we have now but one pressing goal that remains. From the very beginning of our state, mega corporations across the country have operated with free reign to warp and corrupt our nation as they've seen fit. They have affected untold lives with their avarice, and for too long, we of the government as their own tool for power. Now it's time for the mega corporations to be put in their place. Sweeping grant legislation to fully shackle corporate dominance over Russia will begin to be drafted with a full might of Shukshin's coalition behind it. Beautiful. You know, if we're going to think, doing things ahead of time, we're going to go with this direction. 
Now that we've ensured that the core pop components of our democracy uh, are in place, we can now turn our attention to the great injustice that has long been inflicted upon our nation. The women of West Russia have been denied the right to politically influence the future of their own country, and now we can finally open that door to them. Soon equality under the banner of the Federation will become a reality as we move closer and closer to the Russian dream. Fighting women both? Is that a good thing? Moscow. Ah, increase it. admin efficiency. Yes! If you wonder about that, please go ahead once again for like the fourth time, third or fourth time in this campaign. And one episode too, soon, too. We live in the managerial age after all, my friends. Cross the aisle. Uh, corporate limitation act. Befriend the pacifists. And no exemption. Education deferment. Ooh, academic base goes up. Concessions to the trade unions. Industrial expertise. Oh, I don't want to hurt ourselves. Oh. You know, we've gone left every single time so far. Uh, we have to cross the aisle, but describe the ARPP within the halls of the Duma and unsettling and discussing truth exists. When our own political parties, those who've been tasked with putting the people first, have been partaking in generous donations from the various mega corporations, like I probably would. They now seek to bury the secret and hide it away from the public while criticizing their own governance. This cannot be allowed to continue. We must show the world that their devious behavior, further convincing the people to not put faith in those who conceal our selfishness, with a public face of friendliness. They'll no longer be able to oppose their measures to bring down the tyrannical grip of the mega corporations, and our federation will become just a little bit brighter. Cross the aisle. And in a great fight against corporate supremacy, we must begin to acquire allies, and so what better allies than those whose sole purpose is the empowerment of the Russian worker? The members of the DSPR are the best shot at effectively taking down corporate power, with many among them having waited years for a bill like this to come along. With the charisma of President Shukshin and the passion and popularity of the DSPR, we'll finally tear down one of the last obstacles of a truly equal federation. Soon, the dreams of Shukshin once only possessed in the mind. His mind will come to fruition. Celebration and Preparation the sun shines through the skylights of the conference room where the Federation's governing coalition gathered to meet, just as they had so many days ago. The smiles and warm handshakes filled the room in a striking contrast to the awkwardness of the past days. Shukshin gave a warm welcome to his comrades in arms, greeting as he welcomed Korogin and Kantorovich, uh, though the pair were less enthused to see each other. The many representatives of each uh, party had come to know each other with a great familiarity, even on a first name basis, as party divides became a little bit of formality, of course. It's kind of like typical political BS. The lax nature of the conference only became more apparent as the RSLP officials brought out a glass of champagne, many especially the DSPR, protested, but soon all in the room be conceded to a toast. The coalition had undeniably won many great victories in such a short period. The syllabic oppression of years, decades had already begun to fade. Suffrage uh, had been entirely revolutionized. Healthcare was at a quality never before seen in Russia's entire history, and the Federation's workers and land had finally begun to heal from the scars inflicted by the mega corporations. So many in the room didn't believe that they'd ever get this far, let alone quickly. As the cheers and celebrations dragged on, they slowly died out as discussing matters of governance replaced them. Our triumph cannot be understated, of course, but Primakov and his goons will continue to undermine us at every turn. Agreeing mumbles and whispers fill the room with the remarks and Corrigan. We may have won the battle, but the war continues. And what do you propose? Alienating what Siloviki allies exist in the Duma would only make our struggles greater, restriction reply. No, 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 no. The issue is not Siloviki. Kantorovich was met with surprise and raised eyebrows. That wouldn't bother to hamper our legislation if it weren't for the donations rolling in from Penix. We cannot work around corporate interests or power and impede on what can be influenced. No, if we were to triumph over the greed, it must be attacked directly. Sounds fill over the hall. Walk us through this, Shukshin says. The secretary is beginning to dictate. A bill for the ages. I apologize for speaking so fast. It's just, you know, it's a trade I get from my mother. Concessions to the trade unions. In a struggle to bring down the Goliath that is the mega corporations, we must realize that we require more powerful allies in this fight, oddly enough, though. We can find our own, our old enemy turned friends, what being the trade unions and the feder workers' feder organizations of the Federation. Within these groups, a deep resentment of the corporations that control them stirs, and we only need to ignite a spark to obtain their full support with the coming bill. A few concessions. We will ensure the support of the most valuable part of our nation, the working class. See, we, we hammered down the working class a whole bunch er, very early on in the campaign. But that was because we were under Shuk, not We were not under Shukshin. We were under Pokrushkin, who hated the workers, who crushed them at every step of the way. But President Shukshin, however, he, he, he understands the workers somewhat, a little bit. So, he's trying to help them out as much as he can. That's, that's my reasoning for this. That's my, uh, yeah, total reasoning. Limited corporate influence. As the sweeping anti-corporate bill moves through the mechanisms of government, the mega corporations have begun to play every last card they hold to stop it. Every dirty trick up their sleeves, and their remaining political benefactors are working fruitlessly to stop this monumental legislation. Unlike the corporate thieves of the nation, we do not need to resort to bribes and cheap tricks. The corporations must be brought to heel and learn that the government they once held absolute dominion over is their, play their plaything no longer. For the good of the people, we must excise the corporate cancer influencing our government and protect our fledgling democracy. 63.6%? Uh, not bad. It could be better, you know. No austerity. It wasn't worth it. But oh well. Hey, that's looking not too bad, though. What's actually tertiary schooling? Academic golden age. Ooh. Fuel... Uh, no, that's not fuels. Uh, supply was 99% for some reason. 
advanced research facilities, cutting edge research facilities, oh yes, modern agriculture, concessions to the trade unions, yes, the Russian dream. Ten years ago, our state consisted of only a small patch of land in the midst of the anarchic chaos that had spread in every single corner of the former Union. Millions of families were at the mercy of threats once unimaginable as bombs fell from the sky and each day was merely a fight for survival, but the whole winds of fate began to blow in a new direction. Now the Russian Federation has done the impossible. The once ruined cities of old now stand taller than ever as the average Russian now lives a life once thought unattainable. The economy now reaches ever greater heights as we join hand in hand for the prospect of a new and better life. The Russian dream can now dawns upon the fourth power. Ooh, more growth. Oh, heck yeah. So I've read this one, but our southern neighbor. Oh, I can't wait! As the Federation aims to build its up its sphere in order for Russia to retake its rightful place as the global contender, our first and uh, most natural addition to the Russian sphere as a nation of a Kazakhstan. While well, the country's still in turmoil as a result of the Kazakh civil war that has ravaged the poor. Oh, military states. Oh. Uh, that has ravaged the steppe. The land is rich in natural resources and its geographic position as a natural springboard in the rest of Central Asia, Western China, and the Caspian Sea. Before we can explore the rich and numerous possibilities of a Russian nation or Russian return to Kazakhstan, we must first bring the nation back into a sphere of influence. Tatiana, what swept into her husband's drawing room? Uh, a porcelain smile plastered on her face. An herb kissed roast dripped liquid fat upon the wooden platter in her hands. Buttered tomatoes and fine wine accompanying her art, like pearls bouncing on a bride's neck. But as she waded through a strangling cloud of cigar smoke, her husband merely gave her a glance. Constantine, her husband, what a joke. There are only two things he cared for in the world his office as chief of police in Tomsk and his obsession with the raps. Wrongdoing. So it was tonight, as every night. Good on Dmitry Mikhailov. 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 Mikhailov, yeah. A frequent guest in Tatiana's home was already teetering on the edge of drunkenness. Kind of like me, and now they're going to. They're auditing my DACA. Mess for preparation of funds, my butt. The older man's second chin spilled across his chest as he tapped into his cigar into the ashtray. It's never been a problem before, and what? The RAPP's people never had to withdraw a little extra to maintain their mission readiness? Never a last signature on authorization, those hypocrites. Tatiana's husband cut him off with a race hand. No, no need to burst off. Vain, my friend. Enjoy a bite to eat. Constantine motioned for his wife to place the tray on the closest table. Yet he never broke eye contact with his friend. And I'll have Tatiana whip off some dessert. And don't worry about this investigation. I'll talk to my friends in the records department. Whatever you need. <clears throat> uh, to keep Shukshin's boys off your back, I'll have it. He smiled. Ooh. Uh, dear, why don't you start on a pie for Dinka? We have a bit of elderberry left. No? Constantine waved her away, not waiting for a reply. Tatiana swallowed the lump in her throat, nodded, and left the drawing room. But as she entered the kitchen, manicured nails already lighting the gas in the stove, she noticed something out of the corner of her eye. The phone already slightly yellow sat in its mouth just above her paper cutting board. And so she flowered the board and began to conjure a pie crust from nothing. She squeezed the receiver between her shoulder and ear and made a call. Yes, yeah, is, is this the Ministry of Internal Affairs? I like to report a crime. Hello. Ah, Corporate Limitations Act. Coalition Unity, 60%. Uh, Siloviki, iron fisted corporate securocrats who have long strangled the working class under the crushing force of greed and ambition are now weaker than ever after recent reforms aimed at establishing a truly equitable state. Now, we finally take the uh, metaphorical sledgehammer to the weakened conglomerates and force them to take a backseat to the almost all aspects of President Shukshin's vision. Our dream will be cleansed of injustice and our people will finally know the prosperity that has long eluded them. But, you know, I'm going to think I'm going to end it there. We've had, this is one of my longest videos done in quite a while. I'm really enjoying this content here. I love what the devs have done. They've done a fantastic job. Ooh, actually, this probably needs to be integrated here, too. But if you enjoyed the video, though, please consider leaving a fat like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. Tomorrow, and tomorrow, I'll see you as we'll continue on with seeing what else we can do with the Russian Federation and preparations to take on that bald, bald giant who's dying of cancer. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.